Greetings and praise the Lord. This is your New Bethel Sunday School Department coming to you with another astounding lesson topic on the wisdom of Jesus. Yes, we have been focused on the many faces of wisdom throughout the summer quarter, but I'm really excited that we're able to explore the wisdom of Jesus today. And I am just thankful that you decided to tune in with us. Our lessons are derived from the PAW or Pentecostal Assemblies of the World Apostolic Way Commentary. If you don't have the commentary, some may have the quarterly book, The Apostolic Light. And if you don't have the Apostolic Light, please go ahead and grab your Bibles, get your phones, your um, online Bibles, whatever you can. And we will make, be sure that you can, you too can be included in this particular lesson. I am uh, will be presenting, and I am very grateful as um, the Christian Education Coordinator as well as the Sunday School Teacher to be with you. Um, I'm Lit Minister Lately Gray, and I pray that you will be blessed by this lesson. Before we begin, I want us to open up with prayer that um, our eyes and hearts will be able to receive what God has for us. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for blessing our viewing audience. We ask that you would give us hearts and minds to receive the revelation and the wisdom that you want to reveal through your life while you are here on earth. We ask, Father, that you would bless us, sanctify our, our hearts, that they would receive everything you have and help us to apply what we learn. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so today's lesson aim, we're going to look at three particular things. We want to identify the reasons people in Nazareth could not accept the wisdom of Jesus. We want to repent of the occasions when Jesus' words made us feel offended instead of accepting them as wisdom. Then we want to commit to accepting the words of Jesus, even when they challenge us. And we're going to be able to accomplish this aim by looking at our scripture focus which is coming from Mark chapter six, verses one through six. And for this particular lesson, I've decided that we should go ahead and read out of the Amplified Bible because it really um, illuminates the text and provides greater details of what's occurring, the action, what's happening in Jesus's hometown, how is he responding, and what does that teach us? So let us start at verse one one of Mark chapter six in the Amplified Bible. It says, Jesus left there and came to his hometown, Nazareth, and his disciples followed him. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who listened to him were astonished, saying, where did this man get these things, this knowledge and spiritual insight? What is this wisdom, this confident understanding of the scripture that has given has been given to him and such miracles as these performed by his hands is this not the carpenter the son of mary and the brother of james and joseph and judas and simon are his sisters not here with us or and they were deeply offended by him and their disapproval blinded them to the fact that he was anointed by god as the messiah jesus said to them a prophet is not without honor or respect except in his hometown and among his relatives and in his own household. And he could not do a miracle there at all because of their unbelief, except that he laid hands on a few sick people and healed them. He wondered at their unbelief and he was going around in the villages teaching. In this particular passage of scripture in Mark chapter six, verses one through six, what can we learn from these people of Nazareth? As we look um, and go back to the um, our Bible, I hope you have your Bibles out, and if not, just follow along. Um, if we look at what's occurring, Jesus has made it back to his hometown, and as we look at his actions, he's going into the synagogue, he's teaching, and he's having an impact. He's really speaking the word of God with power, with truth. And people are amazed, they're astonished, they're marveling. They're like, wow, like, how did Jesus, you know, Jesus is from Nazareth. Similar to us, you know, um, for myself, I'm from, I was born in a certain location, but raised in Gary, Indiana, and then, you know, moved to Kansas City. So I can really kind of relate to, you know, how people may respond depending on the location that I'm in. So Jesus is back in his hometown and he's teaching and people just are amazed because they just, 
only can remember, oh, I remember, you know, the little boy Jesus. I know him as um, Mary's son, you know, the brother. I know his brothers and his sisters, but not really saying it to a point where they're really astonished to uh, be able to glean from him, but they develop an offense that causes their thoughts and their emotions to just uh, come out of them in a way that has such a negative connotation that limits Jesus to want to operate in his full capacity because their lack of faith in their disbelief, their unbelief of who Jesus was. And so what can we learn from the, these people? The Bible says that the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. As we listen to the conversation that unravel of the people of Nazareth in, his, in Jesus' hometown, we see that these people are, the thoughts of their heart are coming out through their conversation. They don't, they're just not amazed because he has this wisdom. But when they start talking about, you know, Jesus, the son of Mary, most times when the Jewish, uh, your Jewish lineage is described when somebody is pointed out as a son of someone, it, they relate to the father. So it would be um, Isaac, the son of Abraham, or Jacob, the son of Isaac. But in this particular case, they say, Jesus, the son of Mary, which is to allude to the um, to the rumors that, you know, Jesus is not really Joseph's son. So we really don't know who his father is. You know, it's been said that he's the son of God. So there are certain rumors going on throughout the community. Uh, I'm sure they're like, okay, this is Jesus. L let's look at his brothers and sisters. We know they're just a common family. He doesn't seem to really stand out. He, he didn't get a, a master's degree, a doctor's degree. He doesn't have a license. He's just a carpenter. And Really, all of this is just exposing that they are, if I could put it in a, uh, my words, envious, and, and that they're not jealous because they don't have this wisdom. They're envious because it seems that his wisdom is giving him an advantage among the people he's teaching, and they're really grabbing a hold to the word of God. And so what we see, we see pride. We see um, evil thoughts. We um, see an undermining of Jesus's credibility and his competence that is just um, causes Jesus not to shrink back as being who he is, but it limits him in a way because um, in Hebrews chapter six, the Bible says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God for he that cometh to him must first believe that he is and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Prior to Jesus coming back to his hometown, he had performed um, miracles. I mean, some mighty miracles. Um, we read that in, in the Amplified Bible, it said that he can do no miracle. In the King James Bible, it says he could do no mighty work there except lay his hands on a few sick folk. You know, so he was had a capacity to do it, but because there was no faith, there was nothing that met Jesus that allowed him to go... Um, you know, a step further because the people weren't willing to receive his word, his truth, his wisdom, and to, to note that, okay, yes, he's doing miracles. This, this could be the Messiah. This is the Messiah. Others, um, the man who had uh, a legion of, his name was Legion, who had uh, just thousands of uh, demons, uh, unclean spirits in him. And Jesus, he, he when he came to Jesus, he came worshiping him. Um, and, and the spirits came crying out saying, oh, why are you, why do you torment me? Don't torment me. Um, just, you know, send us out into the, uh, send us to the pigs. And this man, Jesus had compassion on the man to deliver him from, um, the legion that was in him and in moving even further we see that as he's approached by Jairus whose daughter is sick as his 12 year old daughter is sick unto the point of death and he comes to Jesus and he, and he asks him please come heal my daughter and on his way there's a woman who has so much faith in Jesus she's not even uh we don't know where this woman comes from we don't know her name but she just acknowledges who Jesus is that he's the messiah that he's a, he's able to meet her faith where she doesn't even have to get in his face to ask him a question she can just have this faith in her heart and her actions if I could just touch the hem of his garment I will be made whole it's a bold move but we see that 
even in that bold move, Jesus' operation of healing is able to flow out of his body. The virtue is able to come out of his body and get to this woman, and she is healed. And as we look even further, well, about, about time this woman is healed, his the servants of Jairus is coming back and telling him, oh, um, don't worry, Jesus, anymore. Your daughter's dead. Um, and Jesus said, you know, fear not. Do not be afraid. Only believe. And he goes to Jairus' house and him, his wife, and uh, Peter, James, and John, they're in the room because Jesus has put everybody out who would try to, uh, I would say, who would try to contaminate the atmosphere of faith. And when you have disbelief, when you have mockery, when you have an undermining of uh, Jesus' ability just to be God, because he was not just a man, but to be God, um, you, we have to put those things out the room. So what can we learn from these people? We have to learn that when we're receiving the word of God, that we're not um, questioning who God is. We may have questions to, you know, how he may be doing a certain thing as to, Lord, you know, what are you doing in my life? Ask him for clarity's sake, but not to undermine his authority as God, his authority as the healer, his authority of being who he is. And so now we we can take it a step further and see how did Jesus respond to all of these uh, uh, questions and all of this question to his credibility of being the Messiah. So what can we learn from Jesus? He says, but um, the Bible says, but Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. Anytime where Jesus is speaking, I'm glad that we can look at the wisdom of Jesus in this particular situation. We see him, um, you know, being questioned, being interrogated by the people of his hometown, the people most familiar with him. But he acknowledges that that the intensity of what he was feeling in the synagogue. And as we, um, as people, as believers in Christ, as people in ministry, uh, wherever you may find yourself, you can realize, take from Jesus and learn from his example. So when people are questioning, even those around you are most familiar with you, those who hang out with you, family, friends, or those are close to you in ministry, when God is given special insight or revelation, it's not that it's coming from um, your own self, but it's coming from God. And if uh, people can't hear um, God, then it's no surprise that they won't be able to hear you or receive you without being offended. Um, back in the Old Testament, many prophets that were true prophets, they had to encounter a lot of times where their messages, where their um, what they would say would have uh, certain rebuttals. People would, you know, say, God didn't say that, or he didn't send you, or if you don't stop uh, prophesying in the name of the Lord, then we're going to kill you. Um, you can look at Jeremiah and other prophets in the Bible who really had to take a stand and understand that their words would not always be popular, but if it's the word of God and it, if it's what uh, the Lord has given them that they had to stand on that and be okay with uh, being shunned away, even if it meant by those who were close to them. So what can we take away for our personal and community um, lives? So as personal, as individuals and as a, a community of believers, we must continue to ask and seek God for his wisdom to pray for an open heart and to receive and believe God's word. We must be humble and repent when needed to receive God's truth and his wisdom. Um, the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and before honor is humility. So as we look at these three points um, and uh, looking back at the text, we see that when um, Jesus, he did heal some, you know, he did heal some people in his uh, hometown, but he can do a mighty work. God, when, when Jesus, before, right before Jesus left, um, he told his disciples, greater work shall ye do, um, because I go to my father. And it's where we can increase our faith to the level that pleases God, that he can do a mighty work in us. But we have to have an open heart to receive and to believe his word. And that comes, that calls for humility. 
the people um, sometimes in our communities or uh, when people think they know about us and know something about us that our record can't speak for itself, but they still have more questions about, you know, our ability to operate in ministry or our ability to serve God or to pursue God at a higher level or in a deeper level. Um, we, we must stay in a position of humility and seek God and say, Lord, I know what you said and reference God as the source of our faith because he's the one who gives us the strength to continue on in his word. And sometimes Jesus, you know, I know for myself, there have been times I pray and um, I'll get up and open my Bible and the word hits me like a ton of bricks, not just like a refreshing cup of water. You know, when it hits me like a refreshing cup of water, I'm like, yes, Lord, I needed that. When it hits me like a ton of bricks, it's almost as if I'm trying to guard my heart from really being exposed by a God who already knows about me. And it takes me uh, humbling myself and saying, God, I don't know everything. I, I need you to um, take out this, you know, that, that place of offense. Don't allow offense to stay in your heart when we're met by Jesus' word, when he's trying to teach us something, when he's trying to instruct us in his ways and his truth. He wants to do the miracle, but the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, and we want that word to bring forth fruit. We don't want offense to cause us to be, to have joy when we first receive it, but because we're offended, there's no fruit that comes forth out of it. There's only a stony ground and a stony heart, so that's why we have to pray and ask God to open up our hearts and to receive God's word for our lives because um, it is in that place of humility that the honor is bestowed, not from men, but from God. And that is the beginning of wisdom. And that's why I'm so um, excited to, to be able to take notes from Jesus. You know, he didn't uh, get upset with the people. He just, he just didn't, um, do all that he wanted to do. He did do something because of he, I believe just his very nature is that he's merciful, that he's compassionate. So there was some people, I, you know, and I look at the text, I was like, I wonder who those few people were that got healed. I wonder what their condition was. It was, was it a headache? Was it leprosy? What was it, you know, was it just, you know, a family friend who so happens to be in the house? Did these people say, you know, Jesus, are you going to heal me? Were they sarcastic? You know, what was that like so those are the questions that um unravel as i think about this passage and i want us to think about you know um what in our lives can how can we apply uh the word of god to our lives even sometimes when it challenges us to re-examine our thought process and re-examine um the way we uh think about who god is and what he wants to do in our life um if i could just you know summarize this uh, particular, the, these people, I would say that they were not expecting the uh, unexpected. They were expecting the same old, same old. They were expecting Jesus just to be uh, Mary's son, you know, not even acknowledging him as the son of uh, Joseph, as um, other writers in the gospel have, had done. But we see that um, here, that it, it's calling for us to glean from the word, to not have an evil heart of unbelief. Um, that displeases God. You know, we want to make God smile. We want to uh, allow his this relationship to grow and for our love in him to grow and to grow in a relationship with Jesus. So if you would like to do more study, there are resources. There's a lot of Bible background, which I encourage you to delve into if you haven't, to, haven't already. Um, there's Mark chapter 6, verses 1 through 6. Mark chapter 7, verses 1 through 23. And um, the devotional reading, which really talks about the heart, you know, the things that it's not the things that go into a man that defile him, but the things that come out of him that defiles him. And that is found in Mark chapter 7, verses 14 through 23. And the questions we want to ponder is, how does God want you, how does God want you to apply this lesson personally? And what insights have you learned? What have you taken away from um, this particular lesson? And put it into action, um, put it into um, play. I am very grateful that I've, I've learned a lot along, this, uh, along just my journey in life this far. Um, even when it comes to sometimes people's perception, it may not be um, what you perceive about yourself, but that's when we have to just stay in alignment 
and be in God's presence and glean from what his mind is and what his thoughts are so that we won't be offended by the people that are offended by us. Because the Bible does say that Jesus marveled. He marveled. He was astonished that, you know, he couldn't do more. He wanted to do more, but it just marveled. He's like, wow, I cannot believe they don't believe. Um, but, you know, these things had to come to pass. So it's a, it's been a blessing to be here with you. I'm going to pray us out. And um, I just encourage you to dig into the word of God and to glean more from the wisdom of Jesus, especially throughout the gospels. It really is a blessing. But Father, it's in the name of Jesus. I thank you for uh, being allowed to teach this lesson on today. I ask that you will bless those who are maybe struggling in their lives or struggling dealing with offense. We ask God that you will remove the, that barrier and just give a place of healing and receptiveness to your word, to your truth, because you you know the thoughts you think towards us, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give us an expected end. You correct the son that you love. And so God, we thank you for giving us correction and allowing us not to have an evil heart of unbelief or and not to reject your word, but to receive it, God, and allow it to do a greater work in us and through us. Lord, continue to bless all that are gathering and wherever they are, bless them throughout their week, throughout their days to come. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you and God bless you. See you all later. <laughs>